On the news this morning, Governor Saludo reassures children of brighter prospects. Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps initiate measures to strengthen intelligence gathering to tackle insecurity. Federal government calls for integration of traditional values to promote national unity and security as Taliban rejects United Nations call to reverse restrictions on Afghan women. Hello, beautiful morning to you and welcome to Breakfast News. I am David Okwakwasele. Before the news in detail, here's a special message. Governor Chukwu Masoluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him our maximum support for the tax ahead. We begin with the Children's Day celebration at Dr. Alex Ekweme Square, where Governor Chukwu Masoludo has reassured that his administration will continue to promote the rights and privileges of children. Governor Soludo was speaking at this year's Children's Day celebration at Dr. Alex Ekweme Square in Oka, where he made a clarion call for a support system for the child in the best possible way. Government House correspondent Eji Kabana has the details. The theme of this year's event is Strengthening Supportive Systems for the Protection of the Nigerian Child, a wake-up call. The event commenced with inspection of guard of honor by the governor as well as March past. Governor Soludo expressed the belief that the event, which is aimed at reorientating the children and aid their development, noted that it would help the children attain their full potential as the future leaders of the Nigerian nation. The governor who read President Muhammad Buhari's speech said that with the measures put in place by his administration, children in all Anambra schools will be back to school every Monday, which he said has been bastardized by the senseless sit-at-home exercise, noting that while children have responsibilities to their future, it is the primary responsibility of government to ensure that they walk the streets freely. While calling on parents to reevaluate parent child relationships, knowing that children are easy prey in the hands of antisocial agents. We owe you a lot. The rights of children, the right to education, the right to personal safety, the right to a clean and safe environment, the right to good health, the right to conducive homes. The rights of children, for me, I can actually enumerate them and go on and on and on and on and on. Because if we don't safeguard the rights of these children, there will be no future for Nigeria and for Anambra State. And therefore, I want to assure our children today that those rights, obligations, that the parents, that the society, that the government owe to our children, we are going to conscientiously, consistently, and work every day to ensure that we secure the future for our children. The Commissioner for Women and Social Development, Mrs. Ifi Obinabo, pointed out that the day was important to redirect the attention of policymakers, parents, and guardians to their important roles to making sure that children are not consumed by issues that affect their well-being and safety as future leaders, with a view to emphasizing the urgent need to intensify collective efforts in the protection of the Nigerian child from all forms of violence occasioned by system failure. The day remains significant in the lives of many Nigerian children. It is a period of invitation to redirect the attention of policymakers, parents, and guidance to their important role of making sure that our children are not consumed by the emergency issues that affect the well-being of our children, the safety of our future leaders. In his speech, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Uche Okafo, stated that the theme is in line with the Governor's manifesto and pointed out that the State House of Assembly was the first in the Federation to pass the Girl Child Bill into law. Strengthening supportive system for the protection of the Nigerian child, the wake up call. And uh, immediately my mind went straight 
to manifest you know, what plans your government have for the children of the Anambra. Uh, it might interest us also to know that um, Anambra State is the first state that passed the Dual Charge Education and Vulnerable Act into law, you know, of all the 36 states. Cutting of Cake Awards Presentation Presentation by Children's Parliament featured at the event, which was attended by wife of the Governor, Mrs. Nonye Soludo, wife of the Deputy Governor, Mrs. Yibezim, the State Chief Judge, Justice Onoche Anechebelo, members of the State Executive Council, including Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezajogi, among others. And still from the Dr. Alex Ekweme Square, Anambra State Children's Parliament has passed a resolution calling on Governor Chukuma Soludo to find solution to the insecurity problem and protect the Anambra child. The Parliament passed the resolution in Oka following a motion of urgent public importance sponsored to that effect by the member representing Anambra Central, Honorable Collins Oje, during their annual sitting to usher in the Children's Day celebration. Chidema Ika Nyong reports. Honorable Oji explained that due to the insecurity challenges experienced in the state, school children are at risk of death and poor quality of education. Considering the fact that Mondays are now compulsory sit at home, the parliamentarian maintained that there should be more awareness campaigns, capacity building, arming the security personnel at schools in order to protect children at their different schools. We need capacity building and awareness campaigns. Both the executive, judiciary, and legislature should form a synergy to care for children. We are clamoring for this because children are the most affected in most situations and are very vulnerable. On his part, the Speaker of the Children's Parliament, Right Honorable Israel Udekwe, noted that it is the sole responsibility of the government to provide security and conducive environment for children. In an interview shortly after the sitting, a child protection specialist, Sir Emeka Ejide, noted that part of the expectations from the newly sworn in parliamentarians is to make resolutions that will support the child's rights. The reason for the Children's Day is to look at the, the welfare of our children to see how far we have gone. Remember, we know that children are the most vulnerable in any society, and the protection of their rights and the protection of the children themselves is a cardinal point of importance to any administration. That is why Nigeria, religiously, and Anambra State in particular, have been earnestly following this celebration with a view to making policies that will improve the welfare of children. The sitting is part of the annual programs of the Ministry of Women and Social Welfare, Anambra State, which takes place before the celebration of the Children's Day. It is during the sitting that members of the parliament deliberate on issues relating to them. The theme for this year's Children's Day is strengthening supporting systems for the protection of Nigerian child. A wake-up call. In Children Matters Now, Anambra State Government has released seven telephone lines to enable the public report any suspicious conducts. Governor Chukuma Soludo disclosed this in a statewide broadcast titled Peace and Security in Anambra as our collective responsibility. Government House correspondent Eji Kabana reports that Governor Soludo said that the phone lines are managed in his office in strictest confidentiality, urging the Anambra to call or test or WhatsApp and they will respond expedi expeditiously. Details from our studio. We are releasing several telephone numbers for the public. The phone lines are 0901-7280-990 or 
or 091-6751-4891. Others are 0907-6237-441 or 091-6804-1120 or 080-931-75528 and 081-241531. The governor recounted his long list of efforts and engagements between his government with state and non-state actors to engender peace in the state in keeping with his promise at inception. He noted that Indibo are known for their enterprising nature, stressing that the forceful sit at home, kidnapping for ransom, forceful taxation of communities, Businesses and individuals, among others, are aligned to way of life of Ndiibo. The governor pointed out that the people of the southeast, especially Anambra, are predominantly Christians, regretting that the enforcers are forcefully trying to convert people, especially the young ones, to idolatry by initiating them into cults, swearing oaths to their deities with the promises of invisibility, consequence upon which youth join them as members and informants, and describe it as the description of the culture of Ndibo. While calling for collective efforts by all to end the menace, Governor Soludo charged communities to take ownership of their communities completely through the leadership of their town unions and traditional rulers by giving weekly security reports to the state governments on the state of security in their communities with the cooperation of the vigilantes and the youths. But let's start with this, um, if you like. The state government has mitigated the measles outbreak in nine local government areas of the state with the vaccination of about 20,000 children in the council area and their surroundings. The Commissioner for Health, Dr. Fam Obidike, announced this in a post measles outbreak response press briefing held at the Jorum Odoji State Secretariat in Oka. We bring you the details. Speaking at the end of the measles outbreak response, the Commissioner, Dr. Obidike, said the state government swung into action. Immediately, the World Health Organization and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control alerted it about the outbreak in nine local government areas of Anambra East and West, Aya Melamo, Ihiala, Idemli North, Newi North, Onicha North, Njikoka, and Oyi, where a total of 88 cases were recorded. He said the swift response through stakeholder engagement intensified routine immunization of 19,609 children between the ages of 0 to 5 years and interministerial collaboration ensured the speedy mitigation of the disease, though regretting that 14 children died from the disease in the state. While pledging that continuous vaccination intervention of ministries of health, environment and power and water resources will be sustained to ensure there are no longer repeat of such outbreaks in the state, Dr. Obdike sought for more collaboration with all stakeholders to ensure that those factors that increase the spread of measles, such as poor environmental and hygiene practices and poor uptake of vaccines, are reduced to the minimum. The Health Commissioner requested for active surveillance of all notifiable diseases by all those involved in disease surveillance and notification as a means of ensuring a healthier Ndianambra. Measles is a well-known viral infection that uh, seriously affects children, mainly under five. It's usually an acute uh, respiratory tract infection that is characterized by cough, fever, uh, sneezing, itching eyes, and sore throat, and uh, sometimes use, uh, also the rashes in the body. The disease spread through the air, it normally spread through the air by respiratory droplets produced when you, you are in contact with somebody coughing or sneezing. It is one of the diseases of public health importance as as thought. So measles is highly contagious, as we have said, and uh, can be spread by every means, especially when people are staying uh, together. It's an endemic disease in Nigeria, with recurrent outbreaks occur in, in irregular manner. So in, in Anambra State, unfortunately, is one of the areas that we normally see it. And the, the peak of it, because it's a respiratory infection and sneezing, it occurs in the dry season, like February, March, April. Contributing, the Executive Secretary, Anambra State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Dr. Choma Izenye Mulo, also announced that Anambra State Government will soon commence a standalone measles vaccination campaign, which will cover all the 21 local government areas of the state. 
April this year, it has spread to nine LGAs. So our team had to intensify RI, which is routine immunization. We had to move to all the settlements in those LGAs to immunize children. Children from nine months to 59 months, basically under five. And we are happy to announce today that we have curtailed the measles outbreak in those nine LGEs. The press briefing was attended by representatives of World Health Organization and UNICEF. From the Jerome Odoji State Secretariat in Oka, I am David Obokase reporting FBS News. The Assistant Commandant General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Zone K, Oka, Felix Oke, has ordered commands under the zone to embark on massive gathering of credible intelligence to curb the activities of criminal-minded elements within the zone. Mr. Oke stated this during his weekly briefing at the Zonal Headqu Command Headquarters, Oka, where he condemned in strong terms the breakdown of law and order witnessed in Anambra State of recent. We bring you the details. As appalling, called on state commandant of Anambra and Enugu to strengthen intelligence gathering mechanisms in their areas of responsibilities aimed at fishing out the perpetrators of the crime. Mr. Oke advised officers and men to be security conscious and professionals in the discharge of their duties as they are being strictly monitored, warning that anyone found misbehaving contrary to lay down rules will bear the consequences of his action. He reaffirmed the commitment of the Zona Command to deliver on the Corps' mandate in the protection of government critical national assets and infrastructure and security of lives and property of the people of Anambra and Enugu at all times. The assistant commandant was full of praises for the Minister of Interior, the Civil Defense Correctional Fire and Immigration Service Board, and the Commandant General of Civil Defense, Dr. Abubakar Audu, for releasing the results of the senior promotion examinations, describing it as a moral booster to officers and men. Mr. Kefoda reminded the public of the need to support civil defense through the provision of useful information that could help in the detection and fight against crime and criminality within the zone. On the national scene, the Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, has called for the integration of traditional values and norms into the fabrics of people's daily lives to promote national unity and security through culture. Uh, Haji Mohammed, who gave the charge in Abuja, said that without security, no nation could make any significant progress or achieve holistic growth and development. According to him, culture is vital in promoting national unity and security, and this assertion is premised on some broad perspectives. He added that when these values came to bear, they would ultimately provide a basic platform that will enable people to live in a peaceful, safe and secure, safe, secure and prosperous country. According to him, the federal government since the inception of the present administration has continued to take appropriate measures in tackling these challenges. On business news this morning, the African Development Bank says the heat tolerance with production being supported by the bank in Nigeria will help reduce importation of the product by 40% by 2023. Ms. Beth Dunford, FDB's Vice President in charge of Agriculture, Human and Social Development, who stated this in an interview with Newsman, said the support will come under the bank's $1.5 billion African Emergency Food Product facility. She said that the heat tolerant wheat technology would have huge impact on food and help farmers to scale up production. According to her, the technology is currently being de deployed in Nigeria and it is being cultivated on 87,000 hectares and in this season they can go up to 250,000 hectares. She said that the bank was currently working to know how much of the money would be allocated to each country, noting that every country on the continent was eligible for the fund. 
Dunford said the intervention targeted at small smallholder farmers would help them accelerate their production. On the foreign scene, the Taliban has rejected the United Nations Security Council call to reverse heavy restrictions imposed on Afghan women, dismissing their concerns as unfounded. The Security Council unanimously adopted a resolution that criticized the Taliban for limiting girls' and women's access to education, government jobs, and freedom of movement since seizing power last year. Afghan Supreme Leader Hibatullah Akhundzada has also ordered women to cover up, including their faces, when in public, triggering international outrage. The Security Council's 15 member states called on the Taliban to swiftly reverse the policies and practices which are currently restricting the human rights and fundamental freedoms of Afghan women and girls. It also demanded the hardliners reopen all schools to female students. Afghan's foreign ministry said the government considers the Security Council concerns as unfounded and reaffirms its commitment to the rights of women. Finally, in sports, Real Madrid goalkeeper Thoribot Kotor has said he will not be afraid to take a penalty if the Champions League final against Liverpool goes the distance today. Kotor, on Saturday, Kotor has an impressive record saving penalty this season, having stopped three of his five firsts, including one from Lionel Messi against Paris Saint-Germain in the first leg of the last 16. It proved a crucial moment as Madrid came back from 1-0 down in the second leg to win the tie 3-2. Courtois said he will be doing his homework on Liverpool's most likely takers, while the 30-year-old said he's also ready to step up if required. And with that news on the Champions League, we bring to end uh, the breakfast news for this morning. But remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television, okay? Or you can follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And here are the main points again. We told you that Governor Soludo has reassured children of brighter prospects. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has initiated measures to strengthen intelligence, intelligence gathering to tackle insecurity. We also told you that the federal government has called for integration of traditional values to promote national unity and security, as the Taliban has rejected United Nations call to reverse restrictions on Afghan women. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround, maintenance of Anambra State economy, and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him our maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's the news this morning. Thanks for joining us. I am David Wapasale.